the increases I have earlier requested for space activities to provide the funds which are needed to meet the following national goals. First, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. Talk about unexpected. That section from President Kennedy's speech to Congress shocked the world and set NASA about the daunting task of designing and building the rockets, launch facilities, and technology that would take humankind to the moon and back. Hi, my name is Whitney Wheeler, and I'm a junior at Parish Episcopal School here in Dallas, Texas. While nowhere near the scope of sending a human being to the moon, my classmates and I know a little bit about taking on a daunting task. Two years ago, we entered the NASA Human Exploration Rover Challenge, held every year at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama. This competition challenges high school and college teams to design and build their own human-powered vehicle that must traverse a three-quarter mile obstacle course that simulates the lunar and Martian surfaces. This is very nearly the same challenge the Boeing engineers faced in the 1960s when designing the original lunar rover. Hi, I'm Sophie Alford and I'm a junior at Parrish. My classmates and I first learned about the rover competition when our teacher showed us a YouTube video of the competition from 2012. The video was mind blowing. We were so excited about the possibility of being able to design and build our own rover to take to Alabama and race. We began pestering our school administration respectfully for a class that we could participate in the competition. We found teachers that were as excited and crazy as we were and supported us. None of us had any idea of what we were getting ourselves into, the size and the difficulty, but that didn't deter us. I have never been more excited about going back to school in August. On the first day of class, we dug into the new competition requirements and started studying the obstacles. And then we realized we were in way over our heads. We didn't know what a drivetrain was, no one knew how to weld, and our teachers had only learned over the summer. The competition loomed over us, and to top it off, as freshmen, we felt out of place and intimidated by the older kids. The enormity of the project sunk in. Building a rover was so very different than building a Lego robot. We didn't know much about engineering. We felt daunted and lost. We were overwhelmed in our classes. In the halls, the seniors seemed like giants that confidently strode from place to place, and the sophomores and juniors seemed to have it all figured out. Just a few months ago, as eighth graders, we had been the seniors of middle school, and now we were at the bottom of the high school food chain, small, insignificant freshmen. Nothing we felt made sense. Nothing we did made sense. We weren't sure what to do, but the only thing to do was roll with it. We got up each day, and bit by bit, we learned about suspension systems, planetary gears, how to weld. The seniors seemed more human, and it turned out that the sophomores and juniors didn't really have it all figured out. As the school year rolled on, the rover team became a safe haven for us. We could ask any question without fear of being judged. There were no dumb ideas or answers to the hundreds of problems we had to solve to bring our rover to life. There was no hierarchy based on class or skill. We were all beginners. Some of the upperclassmen had more knowledge from their math and science classes, but the scope of the project kept us all honest and humble. We each found Rover to be a place where we could be ourselves, have fun, be utterly lost, and yet it was okay because someone else was just as lost as you were. As the April competition date came closer, we found ourselves working at school all weekend from 8 a.m. to midnight. During school, we were working before school, during school, and after school, trying to make our Rover roll. It was fun, but it wasn't all sunshine and roses. It was hard work. And sometimes things just didn't work. And if they did, they'd break soon after. We learned a lot about how math and physics were involved in making multiple mechanical systems work together. But most importantly, we learned about failure. Failure is an interesting animal. If you don't let it get the best of you, if you remain patient and persistent, you will find success. Now, success doesn't always mean winning. It doesn't always mean getting an A. And it definitely doesn't always mean being the most popular. Finding success from these failures will make you a better, stronger, more confident person. We failed a lot, like a lot. We failed as we tried to assemble the rover at school, and we failed in spectacular fashion on an international stage, compliments of NASA TV. I know this firsthand because I was one of the drivers. 
On the first day of competition at the starting line, my drive shaft completely shattered. There was no way that we could pedal and create enough power to get through the course. Although we gave it a Herculean effort, we couldn't carry or push the 220 pound rover for the half mile that remained. It would have been easier to just quit, pull the rover off the course and save ourselves further embarrassment. But something unexpected had happened in those nine months of working together. We were no longer the lost and skittish kids who had begun the school year. We had found our group, our place to contribute. We had become a family, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, and even our teachers, and you never quit on family. Byron, our other driver, and I tried so hard to get the rover through the course. Our team was right there next to us, cheering us along the way. We just weren't strong enough, but we wouldn't give up. The next thing we knew, our whole team was piling in through the ropes. The course officials had given our team the approval to help us finish the race. Together, we lifted the rover and jogged it to the finish line. With penalties, our official time was over 40 minutes, which put us 44th out of 48 high school teams. At the award ceremony, NASA recognized us with the pit crew award, which goes to the team whose rover doesn't work very well, or in our case at all, <laughs> but gives it their best shot. We didn't have the success we wanted, but we were proud of ourselves. We had come a long way, and we were determined to return with a rover that would complete the course. For the 12-hour drive home, we discussed what we saw other teams do well and discussed how we could better our design for the 2015 race. For the 2015 race, we literally went back to the drawing board. We all learned how to use computer-aided design, or CAD software, that allows you to create your ideas on the computer so everyone could see and understand them. This software allows us to attach parts together so we could get real-time feedback on how our systems would work before they were actually built. We then started to talk to people who knew about gear ratios and designed and built custom bicycles. These people ta taught us about the off-the-shelf parts that, with a lot of imagination, could be used to build a rover instead of a bicycle. Now, we'd like to introduce two of our teammates, Madeline White and Katie Wall, and the 2015 Parish Episcopal School Rover, known fondly as Rusty. <laughs> In 2014, in 2014, we had to carry our rover through the entire course, with our official time being over 40 minutes. But in 2015, our time was 6 minutes and 45 seconds. We were faster than notable colleges such as LSU, Auburn, Ohio State, and Arizona State. We placed 7th out of 45 high school teams, were the most improved high school, and won the Neil Armstrong Award for Best Design. We, in the last two years, um, we were the only team from the state of Texas to compete in the competition. And in 2015, we were the only school, high school, or college to be recognized with two awards. The ride home from Alabama this year was much more exciting, but the conversation was still pretty much the same. What worked? What didn't? What did we see other teams do well? We've been told that for the 2016 competition, NASA will make the obstacles bigger and harder, and that we must design our own wheels. A very daunting task. Our, but our team slogan has become, let's roll. We know we had a lot of hard work ahead of us, but we're up for the challenge. The Rover Project has been and continues to be an amazing experience. Each year, we welcome new students to the family, <laughs> and it is fun to watch them as their confidence grows, as they learn to weld and use CAD. Failure is a constant friend and teacher. The challenge isn't necessarily any easier, but we've learned not to let the project's enormity intimidate us. Actually, we've learned not to let anything intimidate us. It doesn't mean that we still don't get nervous, but we know that the biggest challenges often have the best rewards. Middle and high school seem to be a constant roller coaster of emotion. The highs of feeling accepted and knowing who you are, in sharp contrast with the lows of feeling confused and alone. As Good Morning America anchor Robin Roberts says in her book, everybody's got something, something that's hard for them, something that they are trying to sort through. And the secret to life is the same as our secret for Rover. You have to roll on. Everyone has a rover, a mountain, a challenge. Everyone has something that makes them feel daunted and lost. Just because you fail once doesn't mean that you're a failure. It's all a process. A journey of 1,000 miles begins with one step. You have to push through those hard times in life. You can't quit life. Unexpected success and failure will happen, but no matter what, keep your head up. 
So what is your rover? What is your mountain? To close with a quote from the brilliant and wise Dr. Seuss, you're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>